All right, before we start this lesson, I wanted to review what you need to know for topic 10. This is topic 11, so you should be able to do this. And if you can't, you need to go back and watch the topic 10 video. So, given this roller coaster path and all these points along the path, can you tell me which of these points represent each of these? Some have more than one answer. So pause the video and fill these out, or fast forward if you've done this already. Here's the answer. Max potential energy is at the top, B. Max kinetic energy is at the bottom, D, where it's going the fastest. Any point above the midline, this red line, has more potential than kinetic. Any point below is now going faster than it has height. So E and D. Potential energy and kinetic energy are equal in the middle. There's zero potential energy at the bottom where there is zero height. And zero kinetic energy at the top where there is zero velocity. Okay, the story so far. Energy in a closed system is conserved. That means the total amount of energy in the system cannot increase or decrease. If the closed system is a perfect or ideal system, there's no wasted energy. This is good to know for falling objects because potential energy at the top must be equal to kinetic energy at the bottom. And this is if we're ignoring air resistance and friction. That's what a perfect system is. These things are all from topic 11. So this is what you should know coming in. Sorry, topic 10. So this is, for the, if you're doing this for the first time, this is topic 11, predicting conservation of energy on page 30. Given information for potential energy, be able to solve for kinetic energy or velocity just before it hits the ground. So let's take a look at our one example. And it's actually kind of big. It should take up most of your page. So you can title this example one. If we know the mass of a roller coaster at the top is 500, and the height to the top is 66 meters. Can you tell me the velocity at the bottom of the track and the kinetic energy at the bottom? Now the first thing is kinetic energy is mass times velocity over two, velocity squared over two. But we don't know velocity yet. So how do we find kinetic energy? Or it's right down here. Well, what you do know is step one. If you know potential energy at the top, is equal to kinetic energy at the bottom if we ignore air resistance. So the first thing is solve for potential energy and then you know they're equal because all of this stored energy becomes velocity at the bottom. So potential energy equals mass times gravity times height 500 times 9.8 times 66 which equals 500 times 9.8 times 66, oops, three, two, three, four hundred. So this is our potential energy right before it falls. And as it races down to the bottom, all of that potential energy now becomes movement or kinetic energy and it's the same. Even more important, if you calculate the work that the machinery did to lift it, it's also equal to 323400. This is what it means when energy is conserved. It's constantly the same. The work to lift equals potential energy at the top which tells you how much moving energy you have at the bottom. Now we need to find velocity. Velocity, you use the formula. Plug in what we know, 323 equals the mass is 500 times velocity squared over 2. 
And now we need to move everything over and isolate the v squared. So the first thing is get rid of the denominator times 2. So this equals 646,800 is now equal to 500 times v squared. The next thing we do is move the 500. You always do the opposite function. So 500 times v squared, in order to move it, you divide. And we end up with 1,293.6 equals v squared. And the final step is to just solve for v. Square root undoes this. So velocity equals 29 point something. So the velocity equals 35.9 meters per second. So remember, we're solving for velocity, so make sure you have the correct units. So in other words, number, step number two, this is to find kinetic energy. To find velocity, use kinetic energy and mass to solve for velocity. So it's a kind of a puzzle of stuff we've already done already. We've used the kinetic energy formula before. We've used a potential energy formula before. We're putting it together in a new way. Next part. All right, we watched this video from Tosh.0. And this person's sitting at the bottom of a slide and gets hit with a bowling ball. It weighs 4.5 kilograms. If the velocity at impact is 7 meters per second, What's the height of the slide? In order to find the height, you need to know the potential energy at the top. So here's your steps. Number one, kinetic energy at the bottom equals potential energy at the top. Number two, use potential energy equals mass times gravity times height to solve for height. So you try this, pause the video, I'll show you the answer now. So first thing, kinetic energy mv squared over 2. 4.5 times 7 squared over 2. 4.5 times 49 over 2 equals 110.25. That's your kinetic energy. And the relationship between the two? 110.25 equals potential energy at the top. And now I can use my formula to solve for height. 110.25 equals mass, 4.5. PE equals MGH times 9.8 times height. These two multiplied together, 4.5 times 9.8, 44.1. The final step is to Divide 44.1 on both sides. And you get about 2.5 meters. So this is the same process that you're going over. Uh, so this is a review of how to do this. And then there's a roller coaster project that we're doing that puts it all together. The directions for that will be on the webpage.